Hey BTP fans, Josh and Thomas here, ready to talk to you about our standards in assembly. So, uh, as you can see here on the table, we're going to be showing you some very specific examples of what you can expect of BTP work, but for the moment being, uh, Thomas here, one of our best assemb assemblers here, is going to explain to you what you can expect from BTP when you uh, sign a contract with us. Hi guys, how you doing? So, we have a set of standards that we do across all of our projects that you get get with us. Um, if you get a, it's based on painting level actually. So if you get a model painted level four or less, we have uh, one set of standards, and then a level five or higher set of standards. So the, but across all of the stand, across both sets of standards, we have uh, four things that we, four or five things that we do for sure. We, if there's any gaps or miscasts, we fill those up for you. Make sure that they're nice and uh, they don't show up at all once you get the paint on the miniature. We hit all of them with uh, basing material so that you have a, you know, and obviously this is uh, per your request. I mean, if there's something else you have going on that we don't do, or that, that we don't do it, you know, obviously, but standard, these are just standards. Standard, we put a basing material on all of our bases. Um, what else is on there? Now I'm forgetting. <laughs> we the we pin the models. Sorry, we pin all the models. So if there's a, if it, if the model is like uh, got a sm small connection point or it's a heavy mo heavy model such as a like a war machine, war jack, we pin all those those uh, standard so that you don't have them coming apart on you uh, very easily. And then uh, also any miniatures that are on like a uh, a stand like as if they were a skimmer or something like that, we pin them with a metal flying stand to the base and so that you it doesn't break off for you like the plastic ones break quite easily so yeah. we use steel or brass dowels yes yes um so then <coughs> level four or less we catch all the mold lines i'm going to hold up a model here catch all the mold lines uh that you can see from a top a three-quarter or a or a middle view so if i were to extend my model around and look at it from this angle right here and up and then back down. Any mold line that you can see visible there, that would be the mold line we would catch. Level four or less, we don't go underneath, we don't catch the mold, the mold lines that are gonna be underneath the model that are not visible when you're just holding the model like this or seeing the model on the tabletop of, uh, for a battle. Um, but we do uh, you know, take all the flashing off, all the nubs or anything that are from uh, where the sprue connected to the model. So that's that's fairly standard for that's completely standard for our level four or less assembly. Then if you have a level five or higher model, so these are going to be all of your HQ type models, or if you get an entire project with higher quality paint job, you're going to get all the mold lines removed. We'll go through and we'll make sure everything's removed 100%. Um, and then in addition, you'll get it as a standard thing for five level five or higher, you get all of your gun barrels drilled out. Now usually that's an extra service that we do for standard infantry, but if it's your level 5 model, that's just going to be a standard thing now. It's not separate or anything. So, uh, what else am I missing here? Got um, something else on my list. Well, let's see. No, I think that's pretty much... Pretty, pretty that, was, good. that was pretty comprehensive. We clean all the mole lines, all the flash. We drill the barrels, like I said, uh, that's a service that we offer. Uh, very popular with 40k, but we can do it with most uh, fantasy or sci-fi shooter games where we just drill out the hole and it actually looks like a barrel instead of having to just paint a little black dot. Um, it so does really it's, make it's pretty cool. Your models look a lot better. Cool. So if you're interested, uh, email our uh, us at projects at bluetailpainting.com and you can ask the inquiries guys how much that would be. Um, <clears throat> okay. So uh, here's actually one thing that's very important. Uh, a lot of times we'll get customers come to us and be like, hey, uh, I've assembled my army, but man, it just takes too long to paint. So we guys just paint it and we're like, sure, that's awesome. We'll do custom, everything custom, if you are already assembled, unassembled, whatever. Uh, but we do ask you, have you cleaned your models? So Thomas, what does have you cleaned your models imply? To us, to us, uh, in our lingo, I guess you could say, uh, what that implies is that with our level four or less standard, you've cleaned all the mold lines, the flashing, any again, any of the nubs from the sprues, any of those, or you know, and anything like that, you have already cleaned all of that. 
in fact, it even goes a step further and says that you've already, uh, you've already, it, it, you know, you say your model's clean and put together. It's already on a base, and there's already uh, the gaps and miscaps have already been filled and fixed. The resin so has been like that, washed. The resin has been washed if you're using Forgeable, <clears throat> for instance. And we would ask a very special uh, favor from our customers: is uh, some glues are not as good as others. <laughs> Can you explain a little? There's at least a couple times uh, recently, and this is a uh, there's a, a organic sugar-based glue that uh, is being used actually more often than it has in the past, and it is terrible. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I can understand it, it's good for the environment, maybe I don't know, but it's it's awful for putting together miniatures. Um, the miniatures have come in, and the a simple a simple dry brush that a that a painter is doing breaks entire miniatures apart. They just fall apart. Um, so please don't use that glue um, if you're, if you're pre-assembling your miniatures for us. Um, or just, you know, like, like we said before, we assemble all the miniatures. We can do all that for you. Just send it in. We'll assemble it. We'll, we make sure we use the right glue, the right stuff for plastic to plastic or metal to resin or, you know, whatever. We make sure it's well done. And I mean, if you have, again, if you have small areas and stuff, we make sure and pin those too. So. Um, we will get your miniature assembled correctly, uh, but it's really difficult uh, and, and extra time consumption with that glue. <laughs> Excellent. So I think we have some uh, examples now that we would like to show you. All right, guys. So I'm going to just show you some examples of, of what we mean in, pick, in piece. This is a model that I've just taken off the sprue. I clipped out some of the pieces, but you can still see that there's some uh, flashing left over here. From, uh, and this is a notorious thing with fine cast. There's lots of flashing spots. So this would be an example. This is the this is the bad example. I'm trying to show you what we don't want. So here's uh, flashing here. That's right off the sprue model. So if you can notice, it's a, maybe a little hard to see, but there's like the mold line. Here's a really good one right across the top. So when they put when this was in the mold on the miniature, obviously this is the line of where the, the two sides of the mold were. So the, these are standard things that we clean up on all levels of our assembly. Um, but when and what we mean by clean is when we when that has already been cleaned off completely and there's no evidence of that anymore. So um, that's the bad example of flashing and, and mold lines. Here's a uh, miscast spot here in this model. You can see it's a little a little divot and that was where an air bubble was in the mold and they pulled it out and then obviously it's miscast. So this is one of the things that we standardly fill in for you um, to get rid of. Here's an example of a model that I, the same, same, another fire dragon, the same thing, but I've actually taken and cleaned it. You'll notice that there's no, uh, there's no, none of the flashing hanging it, hanging down or anything like that. And I've removed the, all the mold lines that you can see. Now I haven't necessarily gone in and, and removed the ones that are completely underneath because, again, this is, uh, this would be a, a little four or less model, so I'm going to only remove the ones you can see visibly from this angle and then the top angles, of course. Um, here is uh, an example of the model. We've put, we've put them completely together, and uh, this basing is a another option. Lots of people like to send in a third-party basing. This is from... Um, Secret Weapon. Thank you, Secret Weapon. <clears throat> And it's their it's their uh, rubble debris base, and it's really they're really nice basing. We can we can make we can put your miniatures on it, and it makes it really uh, dynamic and good looking model. Now, alternatively, if you guys you know our standard basing invo includes the the gravel, like I said, and then uh, you guys either decide on one of our standard paint paint schemes for the base, or you know say hey you know do do your thing BTP. And this is an example of. Um, Kind of like the deadline, our deadlands. So we've got the rubble on there, and then we've got some dead-looking grass. It's like this space marine is kind of going through a like a dead kind of almost dead world or something like that. Also, another example of this guy on this guy is something that we offer um, as far as conversions go. Um, he has been reposed significantly. This is a standard uh, tactical marine infantry leg, and it's, his leg has been reposed. We've changed the uh, like a, a weapon here for him, so he's got a dagger hanging underneath. And then we did a head swap for a different kind of head. Uh, it's a green eye head rather than your standard space marine head. So, and, and also his, his gun barrel has been drilled out, if you notice. So 
this is a, these are all possible options that you guys could get us to do here um, that, that we can do for, you know, if you, if you want. So this right here is a good example of extreme conversion. This is a uh, model owned by Mason, actually. He made it himself. Um, and this is something that we can do. We can go as, we can go pretty intricate with your stuff here, guys, if you want to do conversions. Uh, but as far as this video, the reason that I'm showing you this is for the base. The base is uh, a good example of like an urban debris that we have done. And this would be one of our specialty basings. So you notice there's like rod on here. This might be concrete wall or something like that. And it's, he's driving over this ruined building here. And, it, and it's got lots of colors to make it look like it's concrete, but also dirty and there's some rust and stuff like that. So maybe it's been sitting there for a while or in a war zone or something like that. So that's an example of that. And then if you guys want to go extremely extreme, this is just an extra, uh, extra look here. This is what we could do for your base if you want to have like a heavy conversion on a base. You know, we've taken a, a land speeder here and put it on the flying base of this vehicle. Um, this is actually for a DACA jet, but um, that's definitely something we can do. So anyway, I hope that this was helpful and kind of gave you some examples of what we were meaning as far as um, both the good and the bad uh, and what we mean with clean. All right, so I have one more thing to, to mention a little bit about assembly, but it's maybe a little bit more in ordering. See, sometimes, uh, when, well, a lot of, sometimes when we order or you order as a client models and get, have them sent directly to our studio, we'll do a model count before it goes down to assembly, but then we actually open up and lo and behold, there's a missing piece. It's really bad, especially when we're talking about Forge World. Uh, but what happens if there is a missing piece uh, we will contact you with options. Our three usual options are one, uh, because we do not start a project until we have everything here, uh, this can cause delays. So we can either one, take that model or models or unit and put it into a second order and then uh, get that piece for you and have it restocked. Or if you order it, you'd have to contact GW Forge World uh, and have them send you or send us uh, the piece that's missing. That's one option. So we can get the rest of it done and just let that catch up when it catches up. Uh, two, we can take it off the order. If you haven't paid your full deposit, uh, we can just deduct it from the cost. If you have paid your full, the full amount, we can only give you a credit. So keep that in mind. Uh, and the third option would be to just give us permission to replace it with it, something that we can come up with. Uh, we have a whole bits wall just chock full of different bits. We might not have the exact one, uh, but we can come up with something really close. So those are our usual three options. Uh, if you can think of more, we can, we'll listen to you and, and obviously uh, work out something that works for you as, as our customer. We want you to be happy and there'll be a fair shake for us as well. Anyway, so I just want to let you guys know that uh, if something happens and that is out of our control, like bits missing, uh, the world continues to spin, so uh, we just have to talk a little bit. Awesome.